pre-calculus probability and statistics unit gathering data. So we want to understand statistics as a way to estimate and make inferences about parameters and then look at the different types of samples and whether they're likely to be biased or unbiased. So first of all, what is statistics? Statistics is just information that you gather on variables. It could be your weight, it could be your income, any such variable like that. And then scientists or researchers are looking for relationships between those and trying to make conclusions. It could be about health care, it could be about how to run their business and so on. So first of all, a population is the group of people or things on which you really want to collect the information. And the parameter is a number that summarizes a characteristic of that population. It could be a population mean, a population median, a population proportion. So a census is when you collect information for every population element. In 2020, there was a census in order to collect information in the U.S., a census, of course, is very expensive. It takes a lot of time and money, and that's why usually you can't do a census. Sometimes you can't use it because the elements of the population would be used up. Like if you're interested in light bulbs, you can't test all the light bulbs to see if they're working, or you wouldn't have any light bulbs left to sell. So generally, people take a sample, which is just a group or a part of the people or things from the population on which you actually collect that information. And then instead of finding a parameter, you find a statistics, which is a number that summarizes a characteristic of a sample. So if you were interested in the population mean, you would then find the sample mean. If you'd been interested in the population median, you would now find the sample median. If you were interested in the population proportion, you would now find the sample proportion instead. Now that statistic gives information about the parameter but it's only going to be good information if the sample was good. And good means representative, meaning that the elements that you get in your sample in some way represent the whole population. Some sampling methods result in biased samples, which may not represent the population, and then your statistics won't be an accurate estimate of the population or the parameter, and therefore they won't give good information. So now we want to look at the different types of samples or some of the different types of samples that you can have. The first one is just a simple random sample where each individual has an equal chance of being selected, such as if you have a list and then you randomly select one from that list. This is likely to be a representative sample. A voluntary sample is when you ask for volunteers, like you have a call in to a radio show and people are called to volunteer and say what they you know believe or think that's generally going to be a bias sample because those volunteers are more likely to be people who have strong opinions about it one way or the other convenience sample this is when you choose someone just because it's easy to have access to them like you're interested in restaurants and so you go to the restaurant which is just down the street from you or you're interested in students in Toledo but you go only to the students in your school. That would be a convenience sample, and that's likely to be biased because there are all kinds of other people who you've eliminated from your sample, and they may very well be different from the students that you're looking at. A systematic sample it would be when you randomly choose a starting point, and then you choose every nth one after that. So you could choose every 10th one, you could choose every 15th one. That's likely to be representative because the first starting point was random, and so therefore every person had a chance of being chosen at the start simply because you didn't know where your starting point was. A stratified sample is when you divide your population into groups, and then each of those groups you take a random sample from it. Now you would do that because each has a bunch of different people in it. So you want to make sure you get a sample of each one of them. That's likely to be representative. Similar but different, and you have to learn to recognize the difference, is a cluster sample in which the groups are divided, but now the clusters are relatively similar to each other. So in stratified, the strata are different from each other. In cluster sampling, the groups would be relatively similar to each other, and then you choose some of the groups and sample everybody or at least most of the people within that group and that's also likely to be representative. So in a cluster sample each of the clusters or groups are similar to one another so you only need to look at some of the clusters in order to represent 
that whole population. Whereas in the stratified sample, each one of those is different and therefore you would need to take some from each one of those groups. So as examples, we have the officials of the National Football League that want to know how the players feel about some proposed changes to the NFL rules. They decide to ask 100 of the players by one of the methods. They either choose the first 100 who volunteer their opinions. They might randomly choose three or four players from each of the 32 NFL teams or randomly choose 100 players from a database of all the NFL players. Identify the population and the variable, meaning what's measured. Classify each type of sample and whether it's likely to be biased and then explain why it's likely to be biased or not. So first of all, the population they're interested in is all the players in the NFL. The variable is their opinion about the proposed changes to those rules. In method one, since the players are volunteering their opinions, that's a voluntary sample and it's likely to be biased since players who feel more strongly about the rules are more likely to volunteer and have their opinion counted. In method two, which is randomly to choose three or four from each of the teams, since you're doing it from each of the teams, that's a stratified random sample. It's not likely to be biased since the players are chosen randomly from each of those teams. And in method three, that's just a list from all the players, so that's a simple random sample, and it's not likely to be biased since the players are chosen randomly from all the possible ones.